Hey, everybody. BT Pop here. With all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back, and welcome to another episode of PT Pop. A mind revolution where I lead you out of the rabbit hole one grain of truth at a time. And thank you so much for downloading me to me and all that happy jazz, my friends. Well, today I'm going a little bit off the rails here. I'm going to talk about something I've talked about a little bit before, but I'm going to talk a little bit about an interview with a gentleman who claims he saw a UFO in a southwest suburb of Cleveland. Stay tuned, baby. And there's hardly anybody around at this point because it's almost 9 o'clock. How convenient. It's cold out, 9 o'clock, and there's a UFO above the shopping mall. All the stores are closing. Only a couple of cars are in the parking lot. And our first inclination was that this is a Black Hawk helicopter or a Chinook helicopter because that's the size of it. Would you like fries with that? Would you like fries with that? Some of you may or may not know. Most of you probably don't know because I don't really talk about this. But you may surmise from the background of my set that I am a UFO enthusiast, alien enthusiast, something along those lines. And right there you see in the picture, I've got my UFO mask, my alien mask that I bought off of Amazon or something. I got it. I don't remember where I got it. I think I got it from a, from a, you know, Halloween store or something like that. So I've got a few years of dabbling in the, uh, UFO world, ufology, ufology. It's getting me all uh, zipped up there. And so, so when I was a little kid, I used to sit in the backyard with my best friend Terry. We were both. He was ten, I was nine, and we would sit in the backyard. He had a telescope. I had my mother's binoculars, and we would sky scan the eastern sky because the courtyard of our apartments faced the east and we would scan the eastern sky for UFOs and we'd look at the moon. The moon would be coming up in the east. And we would sit there and look at the the craters and the moon and we'd look at lights and we'd see a light go across the sky and we'd go, oh my God, it's a UFO, but it would turn out to be as an airplane with landing lights and stuff like that. And I've been into this whole alien thing and, and I thought it was kind of cool to think about and talk about since I was very young. But I recently found this interview. The, the name of the video is UAP Expert has strange UFO sighting near Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. And this gentleman is a gentleman by the name of Timothy Alberino. Timothy Alberino. Here's his website. And this is Timothy Alberino. And uh, Timothy Alberino is an author, researcher, explorer, and filmmaker with a passion for discovery and truth. And he is allegedly originally from Brook Park, Ohio, which is a southwestern suburb of Cleveland. And to give you a little bit, this is important because this is where Timothy saw his UFO. This is his Instagram page. And he has a variety of things on here about all kinds of interstellar beings and Peruvian UFOs and uh, explorer type. He goes off into the jungles of different places, South America, Peru. And he does all kinds of things like that. It, this is his YouTube page where he talks about face peelers and Peru alien attack and Peru alien expedition and things along those lines. Now, I find it interesting that guys like this always wear the Indiana Jones hat. The same with, with this guy. His name is Josh Gates. He's on the History Channel on a TV show called Expedition Unknown. Same with this guy. This guy's name is Josh Gates. He's on the History Channel for a TV show called Expedition Unknown. And it seems like all these guys do one thing. They wear the Indiana Jones hat. And they look rugged. You know, like they've, they've been out in the deserts looking for lost Nazi treasures and alien crafts and stuff like that. And it's almost as if, you know, if you put on the if you put on the Indiana Jones hat, that makes you makes you an automatic explorer. Hello, my friends. We are about to go to the uh, jungles of Brook Park, Ohio, and look for Peruvian UFOs flying above G 
GNC. <laughs> Good me. Oh, I better tighten my hat because the winds from this unmanned aerial vehicle just might uh, blow my hat off. Park, Ohio is a suburb southwest of Cleveland. Southwest suburb of Cleveland. So Brick Park, Ohio, as you can see here, this is this is stats from World Population Review. This is as of 2024. So Brook Park, Ohio is primarily, well, it, its population is 17,722 people. It's in Cuyahoga County, which is where Cleveland resides. It's losing people, a lot of people. Um, it's predominantly a white neighborhood, about 85% white. And it's the median age range. It's, it's an older community. It's an older blue-collar community here in Cleveland, Ohio, that at one time was well-known for the auto manufacturers. Uh, Chevy was in Brook Park. Ford was in Brook Park. I don't know if Chevy's still there. There was a GM plant and a Ford plant. There's, I think there's remnants of both those factories left, but they're mostly gone. And it's well-known to be a white, blue-collar, kind of Catholic community, uh, very... Um, low income area of the world. At least it is now. It's low income now. Maybe at the time of the Chevy plants were making good money back in the 70s, 80s, and the 90s. So it's a mixed match, but it's, it's not known to be a white collar neighborhood. It's a very blue collar neighborhood, but there's roughly 17,000 people there. And it's surrounded by other suburbs like Parma and areas like that that are well known to be blue collar. At one time, very Polish, Slovenian, Czechoslovakian areas. Italian, a lot of Italian people, and they worked in the factories that were once on the southwest side of Cleveland. And you're going to hear in this interview that this gentleman, Timothy, so he saw his UFO over the GNC, you know, which is the nature nutrition related story. You can buy supplements and powders and things like that. And he saw it above a shopping, a shopping center called Brookgate Shopping Center. And this is Brookgate Shopping Center here. Take my beautiful head out of that. This is an aerial view of Brookgate, Brookgate Shopping Center in the suburbs of Cleveland in Brook Park, Ohio. And he saw it above this GNC. And here's a different view of it from a different side. So he allegedly saw this unmanned aerial vehicle, this UFO, above the GNC coming in over the corner of the building right here. So to give you an idea, just before I wanted to preface all this, so you had an idea where we are, who we're talking about, and you know what he saw. Now, let me give you a little bit of background about Timothy. Timothy Alberino is an author, researcher, explorer, and filmmaker with a passion for discovery and truth. So we have that in common. I'm, I'm, a, I'm passionate about discovery and truth. Let me drop my chair a little bit. And he resides in Bozeman, Montana currently, but he's from Brook Park, Ohio, where he saw this, where he saw this UFO. And his website, if you want to check out more about Timothy, he's at timothyalberino.com. And if you want to go on now, I'm going to quote some things from his website. So here's a little bit of information, a bio on Timothy Alberino. As a young man, he dropped out of high school and moved to the jungles of Peru where he spent the rest of his formative years living with hunters and lumberjacks on the river Mazan, tributary to the Napo. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is a guy that grew up, grew up in a blue-collar town, and he just happened to drop out of high school, and he ended up in Peru? <laughs> How does that happen? I mean, with a bunch of lumberjacks. He's a lumberjack, and he's okay. He sleeps all night and he works all day. I cut down trees, I wear high heels, suspend his and a bra. I wish I'd been a girly, just like my dear papa. Another reason we're talking about this is I'm very familiar with this area because I lived in Parma, which is just east of Brook Park. And I lived just south of Brook Park Road in a condo complex. And I'm very familiar with this area and the bars and the delis and the stores and the mom and pop shops. It's a very um, ethnic area of our city and very well known. And if a UFO had come swooping in out of the sky above the GNC and Brookgate Shopping Center, you would have heard it on all the local TV stations. People would be talking about it forever. Down here in the bottom left-hand corner, this is the National Guard Station. 
and up here is the GNC and the Brookgate Mall Center. So this is approximately 1.8 miles. They're 1.8 miles apart. So in the interview, he's going to surmise that perhaps they had some type of re reversed engineered a National Guard station, and they flew it from the National Guard station over to Brookgate Shopping Center just so he could see it. So about 12 years ago, somewhere in there, I don't remember the exact time frame. It was when I lived in, I was living in Cleveland, Ohio for a couple of years. And during this period of time, I was spending a lot of, I was, I was spending a lot of time with my brother-in-law, Tony. And we would often lift weights in his basement. And the, the topic of our conversations while we were lifting usually or very commonly revolved around ufos hey tony hey he passed me that dumbbell over there hey what do you think about this bob lazar and ufos over there in uh, area 51 yeah, i don't know man that's a pretty deep discussion man why don't you just shut the hell up and keep pumping iron uh why are you talking about this baggy ass shit? bob lazar reverse engineered technology all this kind of stuff he was a uh, uh, he's very mechanically inclined, and so we, we would often discuss anti-gravity and... Sure. I, hey, Bob, let's talk. Hey, Tony, let's talk about anti-gravity and reverse engineering UFOs. You know? Hey, it's a good idea there, Tony, or Tim, Timothy. Sorry, Timothy, I called you Tony. I got you and your cousin all mixed up, you know? Pumping iron down in the basement. I think you guys were... Uh, Pumping a little bit more than iron, huh? Maybe a, f a cup, throwing back a few brews between reps. One day, I believe we were having a conversation like that. And one. He believes he was? It's a pretty significant day. You think you'd remember what you're talking about. One day, it was in February. It was very cold outside. It's February and cold. Okay, so it's, it gets to be extremely cold. Right now, it's January 25th, 2024, here in Cleveland. And it is seven degrees outside. It's sunny, but it's freezing out. It's so cold that even when you got all your winter clothes on your legs and everything starts to hurt pretty. So let me have him continue. We decided he wanted to go run to the GNC store to buy some supplements uh, in Brook Park, Ohio, where I was born. I grew up in Brook Park, Ohio. And it's a suburb of Cleveland, 15 minute drive from where we were. So we jumped in the car and we were driving to the Brookgate shopping complex. This is what I showed you earlier. This is the Brookgate shopping mall. And it, there's, a big, there's a big parking lot. And as we're approaching the parking lot, again, it's probably around nine, no, it's probably around eight o'clock because we're rushing to get to the store before it closes. So I don't remember what time it was. Probably closed at 9. So maybe it was 8.30, 8.45, approaching 9, I think. Okay, so it's 8.30 or 9 o'clock in February in Cleveland, Ohio. And it gets dark here at 5.30 around. Right now, it gets dark here in Cleveland on January 24th at 5.30. It's pitch black outside. So this is about a month later. So maybe it's kind of it's pitch black outside. So this is what he said, 8.30 at night. So it's pitch black. He's in the parking lot of a uh, a strip mall on the southwest side of Cleveland. And and as we're coming up to the parking lot, we were stopped at a light, and we both noticed something, some kind of a craft hovering above the corner store uh, in the strip mall. And there's hardly anybody around at this point because it's almost nine o'clock. How convenient. It's cold out, nine o'clock, and there's a UFO above the shopping mall. All the stores are closing. Only a couple of cars are in the parking lot. And our first inclination was that this is a Black Hawk helicopter or a Chinook helicopter because that's the size of it. That was the size of it. And it had these bright lights. And it was just hovering above above the corner store, not very high, like maybe 20 feet above that corner store. And there's a National Guard. There's the a National Guard. Um, what would you call it? 
the, the National Guard is close by. And so we thought our initial inclination was this is they're, they're doing some kind of a drill. The National Guard's running a drill here. They got a Chinook helicopter or something. And OK, whatever. We didn't think much of it, but we did roll our windows down because we thought for sure we were going to hear the, the blades whipping through the air. OK, now if you're that close to a Chinook helicopter. There's no need to roll down your windows. There's not because we've all been around. I've not been in the military, but I've been, been near enough bases. I've been near enough air shows and when these big helicopters come over or they're even within a hundred yards, quarter of a mile away, you can hear the, <laughs> you can hear it through your windows. You can hear those things coming because they make these military aircraft loud as a psyops to scare the enemy. Uh, some of them are stealthy these days, but in the old days, the jets and the sounds these crafts made were, were designed to be noisy, to scare the bejesus out of the Japanese or the Germans or the Vietnamese wherever we're fighting, or the Iraqis or whatever. So the chances of a Chinook helicopter hovering above the Brookgate Shopping Center being completely quiet is like having to roll down your windows to make sure it's a helicopter doesn't make any sense. So we roll our windows down, and we hear nothing. And when we hear nothing, we're stopped at the stoplight, we look at each other like, uh-oh. Uh-oh! Wait a minute. So I drive through the light, and I enter the parking lot, I'm driving, I enter the parking lot, and it's empty, this big parking lot, and I just... He's emphasized twice now that it's an empty parking lot. Hit the brakes and throw the, throw the transmission into park. Throws it into park. I threw it into park. It's, it's getting to be goddamn ridiculous. Because it suddenly became apparent to us, as soon as we got close enough, that this wasn't a helicopter. And we're both looking at it as we're driving in, still expecting it to be a helicopter. And what happened was, as I'm driving into the parking lot, this... Wait a minute, he's parked. Didn't he just say he was parked? Now they're driving, is he going back in time? And as he's approaching it, before he put it into park? Craft, which is hovering above the corner store, gently glides it just gently glides and starts to come move over my car so i i throw it in park now he throws it in park okay so now it, it wasn't it, before he said it was above the building now it's above his car and he then he throws it into park and we're just looking up at this thing and it and it maneuvers above and in front of my car so that I could get a fuel a, a full view of it in my windshield. I get a full view of this thing in my windshield. So it's not exactly above us. It's a little bit in front, like almost as if it's intentionally positioning itself so that I can see the whole thing through my windshield. Jesus H. Christ. And, and, and then it begins to descend. It probably was about 30 feet above my car, 40 max. It was close. I could have easily hit it with a, with, a, with a rock. And it just hovered there. And obviously, we now realize this is not a helicopter. We are in a state of shock. Our I'm so shocked. It's, it's getting to be goddamn ridiculous. Our jaws are just on the floor as we're staring at this thing. And we're just staring at it in silence. Jaws are on the floor. <laughs> Now look at his eyes. He's looking up into the sky as if he's looking up into the sky. Maybe he's re-experiencing the experience. But if he's looking up into the left, he's looking back into the right into his brain, which is the creative side of the brain. I'm just saying. Because we're just, it's astounding. I mean, it's, it's astonishing because there, were no, there was no propulsion system to speak of. No propellers. No exhaust, no engines. And again, this was the size of like a Black Hawk helicopter, but it wasn't shaped like a helicopter. It was shaped, it had sort of a, it had sort of a diamond shape and it didn't have wings. It had little stubby protrusions. Stubby protrusions. The craft had what, what appeared to be angular body armor, like a grayish green or perhaps it was black. I couldn't really tell. 
Listen, folks, there's one of them newfangled horseless carriages coming. And the fuselage was very interesting. It was it was somewhat similar to the F-117 Nighthawk stealth fighter. Somewhat similar. Yeah, that angular body armor, but it didn't have wings. And it was longer. And I'm just... We're just staring at this thing, and we got a good long look at it. And eventually, eventually I said, I kind of came out of a stupor and I'm, as I'm looking at this, and I, and I remember that my, my brother-in-law had a smartphone. I, at the time, still had a flip phone. He had a smartphone. And so obviously what comes to mind is take a picture, take a video. So I said, Tony, your phone. Tony, your phone, you know. Hey, get your, hey, get your head out of your ass. Get the phone out, you know, Tony. Your phone. Your phone, Tony. Hey. And he's just like he's coming out of a daze, and and he starts feeling for his phone, and he grabs his phone out of his pocket, and he goes to lift it up, and he drops it. <gasps> oh. And he's scrambling on the, uh, trying to pick it up, trying to find it because it's dark in my car. He's scrambling to pick it up off the ground. And when he grabs it, he, he picks it up and he lifts it up to take a picture or a video. And the craft just lifts up in the air a little bit and just starts to move off. What do they as soon as he gets talk the like this in some Panama City sailor want a hump hump bar? Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. Oh, like as soon as he's starting to lift it up, the craft just starts to move off. Um, we so so the craft had beings flying it that could tell could zoom in on the car and say, "Oh my God, they're about to take a picture of us. We better go so nobody sees that it ever happened." Hey, Bill, uh, hit hit the thrusters. We're out of here. All right, Jake. By the way, it's very important to note that. By the way, it's very important to note this particular night was very very windy. It was so windy that when I parked my car, the gusts of wind were shaking the car. That's how windy it was. It was very frigid air, and it, it, was, it was just extremely windy. This craft was entirely unmoved by the wind. So this craft is hovering, and it makes no sound, has no noticeable propulsion, and is defying the laws of physics on the earth by not being at all affected by gusts of wind that are shaking a car that probably weighs two to 3,000 pounds, right? Unmoved. My car is shaking. This thing is totally still, unmoved by the wind, unaffected, as if it was in its own atmosphere. Just like that's what I would think when I see a hover hovering helicopter. I think it's within its... It's within its own atmosphere. Yes. Watch this thing just move over the horizon. And, and it was so windy that, that the wind instantly hit our faces and cold. And we couldn't believe that this thing was not being affected whatsoever by these high winds. Interesting. So uh, the off camera guy even goes, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. It was obvious to us that we were looking at s advanced technology. I don't know who was piloting it. I don't know why. It, it, I felt I had this strange feeling that th I was supposed to see this thing, that whatever intelligence was behind it. So this guy thinks that he was picked out out of 20,000 some odd people in Brook Park, Ohio, to see a UFO. It was intentionally meant for him to visualize it. So they somehow zoomed in to his brainwaves and said you must see this ufo go to the brook park brook gate gnc and you shall see a ufo look up at it and be dumbfounded but what's the why why would alien beings or the u.s government want him to see this craft and it, and um maybe it's because he's trying he's got an agenda of selling books and an online channel and possible tv shows i don't know was waiting for me, wanted me to see this craft. Now, keep in mind... It was waiting for him. ...that the topic of our conversation, me and my brother-in-law, was often reverse-engineered alien technology, UFOs, Bob Lazar, Element 115, the S-4 facility, deep underground military bases. This was the 
this was the usual fare in, as, as a, in regard to our conversations. Um, and, and we were just talking about this stuff at his house in his basement. They were just talking about it, working out, hey, Tony, what do you think about Bob Lazar? You know, what do you think the chances are we'll ever see a UFO? Oh, do a couple more rips. We'll go up to GNC there at Brookgate. Maybe we'll find ourselves some UFOs. You know, it's a good idea. Lifting weights. Here we are heading to the GNC story, and what do we find? Apparently, waiting for us, an advanced aerospace vehicle. I would say that the odds are very rare. I mean, are 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 very slim. Uh, that that we would have such an encounter after talking about this kind of thing. So so. Here is my theory. I, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but my theory on this whole thing is this. Now let's go back to the shopping center here. Now, this this is the GNC where these fine, fine gentlemen were going. This is the Brookgate Shopping Center. And here's another angle of it. And let me zoom in. Look what's next door to GNC. Whiskers Pub. <laughs> <laughs> this is my theory, okay? I think Tony and Timothy, Tony, after they got done pumping some iron, you know, talking about Bob Lazar and reverse engineering vehicles, you know, they went over to Whiskers Pub and they threw back a few. <laughs> and on the way out, they went, hey, man, look up in the sky, man. I'm seeing pink elephants and UFOs, you know? Hey, look at that. It's, it's, it's meant to be, man. They came down to talk to me, you know? Yeah, Whiskers Pub. I think I think they were uh, pumping iron with glug 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 in in Whiskers Pub. Yeah. Hey man, you know that Bob Lazar guy he used to reverse engineer UFOs in Mary Fifty One. Oh man, we better go, man. Our wives are waiting for us, man. I got to get back to that Peruvian lumberjack forest. Oh, man, let's go outside to our cars and get warmed up with some bong hits. Glug, 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 glug. They, they were pumping iron in, in Whiskers Bar. Whiskers Pub, I think. I don't know if Whiskers was there back then because this picture was probably taken six months ago. <laughs> but come on, guy. I mean, I, I like to pretend, you know, there's the, the little part of me still believes in in this kind of stuff. That's why I have all the, the paraphernalia that's related to UFOs. I've got coffee mugs and I've got little statues and I've got Halloween masks and stuff, but I don't really believe there's little green and roaming around my yard with hovercrafts above my house, trying to control me and tell me to go, go to Brookgate shopping center and see a UFO. And, and to imply that it, he implied that it, it could be the National Guard with a reverse engineered hovercraft or something that they took out of a UFO and flew it over to Brookgate Shopping Center at 8.30 night in the middle of February. I mean, what's the point? I mean, number, number, you know, I, I still think they were, they were uh, doing curls at Whiskers Pub. That's what I think. But, but you have to consider the source here. Now, this guy, as I told you before, this guy is an author and he's, uh, you know, he's got a YouTube channel and here's his YouTube channel and his YouTube channel covers all this stuff and his YouTube channel started, it looks like he's got 210,000 subscribers, he's got 101 videos and let's see, I don't know if it tells me on his he joined. Oh, look at this. Look when he joined YouTube. He just happened to join in May of 2014. Hmm. A couple of months after 2014, he saw this UFO. Is, is it just by chance that just a few months, three months after he saw this UFO, he joined YouTube and started the Timothy Alberino channel where he talks about, look, look at his, his oldest Video. His original, his first video was the Alberino analysis, elongated skulls, the Alberino analysis, the Atacama humanoid. Now this is uh, that's only nine years old. He started the channel in 2014. How come he didn't make a a video for three years? 
so most of his channel is is related to aliens and things like that now if you go to his if you go to his website in 2014 timothy partnered with renowned author researcher steve quayle to produce the highly acclaimed true legends documentary uh true legend documentary film series which he directed wrote and edited the true legends brand has since developed into the largest conference in its genre bringing together over 3,000 people every year in Branson, Missouri to discuss topics related to forbidden history, ufology, and Bible prophecy. Okay. So this is just my theory. I don't know this guy from a hole in the ground, and I don't know what his agenda is. He may have very well seen a UFO over the Brookgate Shopping Center, Brook Park, Ohio, one night after pumping iron with his brother-in-law Tony, I think I said cousin earlier. I was thinking my cousin Vinny. I, I admire him for for approaching this topic and saying stuff like that. But but I think he had an agenda to push. You know, let's say he has his brother-in-law, and they're like, "Hey, man, they're throwing some uh, bruise back at Whiskers." Hey, man, you know this whole Bob Lazar thing? Glug 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 glug. And uh, UFOlogy and reverse engineering stuff. How can we make some money at that, man? Hey, T Timothy, you dropped out of high school. You went to Peruvian, Peruvian jungles to be a lumberjack. And now you're here with me throwing back a few at Whiskers Pub. Glug, 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 glug. How can we stop uh, living on the streets? Maybe we can make some money off this UFO thing, you know? Hey, man, why don't we decide that we tell the people there was a UFO over the Brookgate Shopping Center, and I'll prove to everybody that uh, I'll make it real, uh, I'll learn how to say it without looking like I'm lying, and then uh, we'll make a fortune of it. I'll sell books, we'll make movies, we'll do all kinds of things. That's what I think. You know, I'm not putting them down. I, yeah, I'm mocking them. I'm making fun of them. But I think it's more likely that they, they thought, maybe, how can we cash in on the UFO thing? How can we cash in on all of it? That's my theory on it anyway. I don't know. It, it, the, the reason I find it far-fetched is the area where he saw the UFO. And there's no reports at all. I did a search on the net for UFOs in Brook Park, Ohio. And I'll go for you. There. I'll take you over there now. UFO, Brook Park, Ohio. Now, you would think if there was a UFO, this area of the country... There would be big stories on it on the local, and there's nothing. There's nothing in the media about this. There's hot zones and stuff like that. But if if there was a big sighting of an unmanned aerial aircraft for Brook Park, Ohio, I can tell you that half half the population would have seen it because it maybe not. I mean, if you take his story at face value in February uh, eight thirty at night when it's dark outside and, and that cold. Um, there's not many people out. The, most of the people out are out shopping or they're going to the corner bar or they're coming back from the corner bar, things like that. And maybe guys that saw it were so tanked they thought they were just having you know, hallucinations or something. I don't know. But it's an odd place for an unmanned aerial, aerial vehicle to appear to a couple of guys that were just pumping iron in their basement <laughs> in the middle of the night. And the guy thinks it was it was called to them. It was it was destiny that he saw it, that they they spoke to him and they said, "You should go see a UFO in the Brookgate Shopping Center." It's just kind of like what. It, so that's my analysis of that video. I mean, more power to him. I mean, he's got a lot of subscribers on his channel. Uh, he's popular. He's got uh, two hundred ten thousand subscribers. He's only got one hundred and one videos. Um, let's take a look at the stats on his site. Here's the stats on his site. Uh, he's got 154,000 subscribers. His view rank is 384,969th. 384, out of like, I don't know how many. That's that's out of billions, millions and billions of videos. He's listed as entertainment. Um, within the last, since December 17th of last year and now, at 138,000 views, he's gained 7,000 subscribers, and he hasn't published any videos in a while. So my guess, this is my guess. I think this gentleman and his friends are trying to cash in on the UFO craze. I'm not certain how, but but he's you know he's down from the Peruvian jungles being a lumberjack, and that's okay. This is all I have to say about that. And I'm PT Pop. Thank you so much for watching. 
Just remember, anytime you put on one of these hats, true explorer, my friend, Alvita Zane, baby. I wish I'd been a girly, just like my dear papa. I cut down trees, I wear high heels, suspend the land of stars. I wish I'd been a girly, just like my dear papa. Oh, Rivers, and I thought you were so budge. Would you like fries with that? Would you like fries with that?